back to the Sword of Truth podcast, the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a quill dipped in craft brew on the side. I'm Jade. (laughs) Interesting choice there, Jade. (laughs) I'm Nate, and on this episode, we are walking into chapter 23 of Blood of the Fold. Real cash. Super cash. Also, I don't smell. Oh, no? I am proud to report. Good. I think that's good. <laughs> Not that I normally do. Just it has to do with <laughs> you the, sound very proud. the thing. <laughs> yes, I am a grown-ass adult who uses deodorant and showers regularly. So, fresh. <laughs> I'm happy about that fact. Yeah, but. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm not upset about it. You can test me if you want. I'll wait. Right there. Go ahead. Dig in. No, take, a, take a whiff. I, I, I'm going to just drink my beer, thank you. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to just drink my beer. We're going to talk about this chapter. Oh, oh yeah. Again, the reason that we're here. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole point of, of all this setup that we have here. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose that sounds like a good idea. And actually, it's not a very long chapter, but I think there's plenty to be taken from it. Yeah, there is. Let's fucking get into it, man. Let's. All right. So the chapter starts off with Richard as he is struggling to keep his head. It's not a pun. (laughs) Maybe a pun. (laughs) He's in public, so he's fine. I'm sure. He knows Catherine is on her way. He can smell her. And he has to use the rage from the sword to keep focused. So this tells me a couple of things. One, uh, the sword is an invaluable tool, which we already knew. But it's like his his go-to, I need help, use a sword. Yeah. It's instinctual now. We were talking about that on the last episode. The second thing, cat must smell bad. Because, okay, I'm sure she's wearing a perfume or something like that, but... Or it's just her scent, like her her womanly scent. That, well, okay. So then what we get from that is that Richard is basically graced with the nose of a bloodhound. <laughs> In her specific instance. Or Kat is severely over-applying the perfume. <laughs> now yeah, I'm... She's not even in the room. No, not yet. I'm a firm believer in the three-foot rule. If you are six feet away and I can smell you, you smell too much. Good or bad? You've been able to test that theory a lot in the last year or so. Yeah, well, we've all been here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you smelled somebody in the last year, then you were like, you're wearing too much. For sure. Oh, yeah, and you're too close. Please back away. Yeah. If I can smell you, mask or not, you're too close. <laughs> <laughs> so you look in Egan, walk Cat into the room. Still wearing last night's dress, right? Because she doesn't have any other clothes with her. This is all she has. Uh, Plus, she doesn't sleep in the dress, so it's not dirty. She was naked as hell last night. Right. So she just had to put it right back on. And that's like the first thing Richard thinks of, too, when he sees her in the dress. Like, oh, the blue dress. Oh, of course it's the same. (gasps) Oh, she sleeps naked. (laughs) And they walk up to the dais where Richard is waiting. Dais? Dais. Dais? I want to say dais. No. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is Deus. Let's go with that. Please tell me <laughs> if I'm wrong. So Richard was up all night last night dreaming of her. This is funny to me because if you are awake, then you're not dreaming unless you're daydreaming, but you don't do that at night because it's oh. regular dreaming. Maybe I'm going too deep. I, he, um, he kept waking up from the dreams. I oh, think, okay. Because they were intense dreams. Yeah, he was. they were wet dreams probably or Oof. something. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I know Richard has been away from Kalen a long time. And even though the chapter follows Richard through his deepest, like, thoughts, I just assumed, quote unquote, off camera, he's just jerking off all the time. (laughs) He has to be. He has discipline, Nate. The only sword he ever grabs is the sword of truth. I mean, he did technically get some four days ago. Yeah. So let's not forget that. So maybe it's not so bad yet. But yeah. That's what he's doing. He's trying to fall asleep so he can have another one of them cool-ass dreams. And, hey, you know, someone could theorize, I guess Richard could theorize in his head, if he doesn't realize that there's a fucking magic spell going on, like, he's had a sexual awakening now. Like, the first time he had sex with Denna, it wasn't actually sex. It was more like rape. Yeah, oh, yeah. And we've never talked about any sex before that with ladies in his village or anything like that. So... He had sex with Kaylin for the first time, and now he's just feeling extra horny. Maybe that's what this is. <laughs> he's like, 
That's a thing people can do? That's what I've been oh missing my out on? Oh, my yeah. God. Anyways. <laughs> so he finally thinks about Kalen and, like, hopes that he'll be forgiven for all this weirdness with this lady. So we know that he's not, like, trying to be secretive right now. He has every intention of telling her exactly what the fuck happened. Well, and I was, like, really relieved, too, because this is the first instance we've seen since Catherine came around that he's thought of Kaylin and, like, how he felt about her. Like, the idea of her as a person for a little while came up when they were doing the food thing, but he dismissed her. He wasn't like, oh, Kaylin, that person I love. He barely remembered who she was. Right. So it's nice that we can see that, okay, the night away from her did him some good. Because Kaylin came back to his mind, and he knows he doesn't want her to be hurt by him wanting to fuck this other lady. Right, and we just learned about, like, a glamour and what that does to a person, and so we know that, obviously, there's some fuckery here with that. Richard has good intentions. If everything is okay. But he may just think he's being, like, he may just think he's being kind of a shitty person. Because he, he's like, I have no control over myself. For no goddamn reason, because he doesn't know it's a spell. Right, which is out of character, but it's the yeah. way he feels. Right. No, totally. Right. So Kat looks very surprised to see all of her Keltish guards now in Daharan armor. They needed a bit of convincing, but once they put on the armor, they're like, fuck, we look good, dude. <laughs> this yeah. This cut so nice. Do you now, see my butt? As a person who has never served in the military, thank you for those of you that have, by the way. It's not the uniform that's going to get me in there. Oh, well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know how the camouflage and the fatigues look, and, like, it's cool, but I don't want to wear it bad enough to go to war. No. <laughs> so, and I mean, look, these guys are already soldiers, yeah. so it's different. But I just, there's got to be more than, they literally said outfit. I'm sorry, Terry literally says outfit in the chapter, <laughs> and I'm like, that's not an outfit. But <laughs> I don't think that, oh, we're wearing red now instead of blue is going to get me to be like, fuck yeah, let's go to battle. You've never worn one of those fitted soldiers outfits, Nate. They hug you in all the right places. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I, I don't know why I picture those old Roman armor things when they have like the metal chest yeah! plate, but then the skirt for no reason. <laughs> and I know it's not a skirt. I'm going to get crucified. Um, <laughs> it's a double pun. Anyways. But I just, I don't know. I don't think looking cool is going to make me Maybe want to fight is. for somebody. These outfits give them abs, so they're, like, all for it. <laughs> I but guess in maybe just the way that Richard uh, stressed the importance of what he was fighting for, and that's not why he has Kelton's on his side. Now, we know Kelton's are shitty people. Ha! Another pun. Ah. Um, But I don't know. I would have figured that he wanted them to know his his the reason behind everything instead of just saying, look, don't you look fucking cool? I'm just going to say maybe their old shit had literal shit on it, like literal pieces of shit. Oh, yeah, all the stains from the... Or, or like, uh, that was their insignia, <laughs> maybe, was one of those little turd emojis. <laughs> they just have um, a smear on their so chest plate. <laughs> it's an upgrade, okay? And they get their weapons back. So either way, we're moving up. It's like orcs with the hand. <laughs> Plus, when people see them coming now, they're going to think they're the Horans, oh, and they're fuck. not going to go, oh, hold your nose, because the Keltons are coming. Yeah, yeah, the Keltons have a bad, you know, rep, and being a Daharan, or at least looking like a Daharan, uh, will only serve them. Yeah. So, since there's been a storm, the snowstorm, right, that the tracks were all lost in, Yeah. Most of the dignitaries, they can't leave to deliver their messages home so they can get this whole surrender thing underway. Or they haven't been able to till now. Right. Richard decides that the highest of them should stay and watch the official surrender of Kelton before they take off. So they're like, hey, this thing is happening. You bore witness to it. It's legit. Yeah. You're not just going to go home and forget about this. This is a thing that is happening. I think he's just taking advantage of it. He's like, oh, you guys are still here? Let me show you one more cool thing I just did. Yeah. I mean, well, I guess look at it like this. Galia basically had to join because he's about to marry the queen of Galia. So yeah. that that's a given. But Kelton is the first one and a major one in the area, too. 
they're responsible for a lot of shit that we actually get into a little bit later in the chapter, but, like, it's a large part of the Midlands. Yeah. I don't know. To me, that would signal all those other little guys, the smaller countries, to, like, join up, dude. <laughs> yeah, they did it of their own free will, too. Like, well, we're going to see that. <laughs> right. So remembering that he doesn't need to death grip the sword to use its magic, he puts a picture of it in his mind. Like he was taught at the Palace of the Prophets, and he focuses on it now. This is because we have Lady Cat close to him now. Yeah. And, you know, within arm's length, and he's starting to lose his shit. So he needs the sword or an image of the sword to keep his mind off of her. I think that this strongly implies that Richard knows he's being fucked with. Because what's... Why? Why else would you need to use magic? Okay, I guess here's the point. I'll keep it brief. Richard has morals and principles. And he goes off at length a lot to tell other people about what their morals and principles should be. Because that's just the way he is. So suddenly he's uncontrollably lusting after the stranger and he needs the sword to keep him in check to remember his own morals right so i think that he knows that this is a magic thing because he's leaning on the sword because it's a magic thing uh, and he's using his han to protect himself from yeah. it so you think it's intentional i think that could be i think i would assume in richard's position i mean i don't know if i may be overestimating my intelligence but i feel like in his position i would feel that way I would be like, I've met a lot of bitches in my day. <laughs> not one. Not one. Right. Has ever made me do this. Something's fucky. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe the magic is just clouding his brain a lot. And so he's just like, this girl has something, man. She's got something. And I just, I also think it's funny that because he's been in the presence of Nikki, right? Yeah. The, that's, the literal embodiment of lust. And he was like, eh, nothing. It didn't even wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> and now this lady, who uh, apparently is attractive, but like a little older, a little less attractive, a little more average or whatever. I don't know exactly what, but yeah, not as good looking as Nikki. Or Kaylin, as we've been told. Oh, yeah. I mean... No, Kaylin's tops. As far as I consider, Kaylin is like not as lustful as Nikki, but has all the just all the right stuff. Classically Guys, beautiful. You maybe? know what I'm talking about. They just have all the right stuff in the right places. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but for this lady, he's completely unable to help himself, and so he needs the sword. I just like that's a very big thing, and I think that must have been intentional. I would agree that at the very least, he should be realizing something is going on if he's having to lean on the sword. Or, yeah. or use, because right now he stopped using the sword. Now he's just, like, focusing on it in his mind. Right. He doesn't but have to grip it. But he's, he's still, still using his hot. Yeah. Exactly. So this scene is fucking awesome, right? They are here for the surrender of Kelton. Richard had gotten up early to prepare the surrender documents for Kat to sign. And Richard has set up the situation to put so much pressure on her. Like, we're here. The paperwork is done already. Your people have already checked it. All you have to do is sign. Yeah. And she balks at first because it's a fucking lot. And yeah. I get why she balks because Richard has very obviously set up this situation to catch her in. You know, there's a couple times though here during the scene that she does like stop and it's almost because we know she's under a glamour. So it's almost like she's I don't know. using a glamour. He's under the glamour. Well, she's not, though. Like, she's being used, too. She, like, I don't know how much control she really has. Like, she has control, but you know what I mean? Like, would she be doing all this stuff? Would she be signing Kelton over right now if she wasn't under Lord Brogan's control? Well, I don't think that that control is a glamour, though. I think she is definitely being controlled. But then they, like, the special spell that they, right. the second yeah. one, must have been... Putting her, like, what am I trying to say? She has two spells on her. Enabling her to be using a glamour, not of her own free will, or maybe she is. I don't I don't know. She's a bad guy. I'm a 